Hi, and welcome back to my videos for General Chemistry 2. Today I want to tell you about how we can answer one of the most basic questions we can ask about chemical reactions. How do we know whether or not they're even possible without our having to put in a lot of energy to get them to start? It's hard to think of a more practical question that a chemist might want an answer to. For example, you may have seen this reaction before in which solid sucrose and potassium chlorate react to form potassium chloride, CO2, and water vapor. This is a very exothermic reaction, so the enthalpy of the products is lower than that of the reactants, which is a favorable situation. That gives us good reason to suspect that this reaction might be spontaneous, meaning that we don't need to put any energy into the system in order to make the reaction happen. In addition, if we determine the entropy, for example by using the data in Appendix C, we find that the entropy is positive 3943.6 joules per Kelvin mole. That means the entropy is positive, which is what we expect for a spontaneous reaction. So both the enthalpy and the entropy change for the reaction suggest that the reaction could be spontaneous. And if we actually try to perform the reaction, we find out that it really is spontaneous. But consider these two reactions. The first one is another exothermic reaction with an enthalpy of negative 37.1 kilojoules per mole. But this time, the entropy is negative instead of positive, which isn't favorable. And the second reaction is endothermic but the entropy is positive 108.8 joules per kelvin mole. In both of these reactions, either the enthalpy or the entropy seem to favor a spontaneous reaction, but the other seems to make the reaction less spontaneous. How can we tell which one will win out? That was a question that many chemists and physicists tried to answer during the 19th century, and the person who solved it was Josea Gibbs in 1873 he realized that the enthalpy and entropy both contribute to the spontaneity of a chemical reaction according to this equation. Delta G is a property we now call the Gibbs free energy. Delta H and delta S are the enthalpy and entropy, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. For example, take the first reaction we mentioned in this video earlier. We saw that the enthalpy was negative 6420.5 kilojoules per mole and the entropy is positive 3943.6 joules per kelvin mole. We'll plug these into the equation, but first notice that the enthalpy used kilojoules and the entropy uses joules. We'll need to use the same unit in both terms, so we should convert one of these units. It doesn't matter which of them we convert, but I'll change the entropy units to kilojoules per kelvin mole, which gives us 3.9436. To complete the calculation, we need to know the temperature where we perform the reaction. Let's suppose it's standard temperature, which is 25.0 degrees Celsius. That's 298.15 Kelvin. When we perform the calculation, we get negative 7596.3 kilojoules per mole of sucrose. So what does this result tell us? Gibbs determined that if the value of delta G is less than zero, the reaction is spontaneous. If it's greater than zero, the reaction isn't spontaneous. It's important to notice that if delta G is greater than zero, that doesn't mean the reaction is impossible, just that it isn't spontaneous, which means that we'd have to put energy into the system in order to perform the reaction. Finally, if delta G is exactly equal to zero, the reaction is at equilibrium. This is a very useful way of determining whether or not a reaction can occur spontaneously. But after Gibbs proposed the idea, it was almost overlooked forever. It turns out that Gibbs wasn't a very good communicator, and when he published his discoveries, it was in a fairly obscure journal, The Transactions of the Connecticut Academy. It might have faded into obscurity, but luckily it was noticed by the Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell, who recognized that Gibbs had made an important discovery and publicized it so that other scientists heard about it. It really pays to learn to talk to other people about your work when you're a scientist. That's one reason you learn to write good reports on your experiments when you take a chemistry course in college. <laughs> 
Anyway, there's actually two easy ways to determine the Gibbs free energy for a chemical reaction. One way is to use the equation we already talked about. The other way is to use Appendix C in your textbook. The value of delta G for lots of compounds are listed in the middle column. Just like the enthalpy and entropy, we can calculate the Gibbs free energy by finding delta G for the products and subtracting delta G for the reactants for a chemical reaction. But watch out, it's important to know that the data in the appendix is only good if the reaction is taking place at 25.0 degrees Celsius. If the temperature is anything else, we need to use this equation, which we saw earlier. For example, take this reaction, which we mentioned earlier. If this reaction takes place at 25.0 degrees Celsius, we can use the data for delta G from appendix C to calculate the Gibbs free energy for the reaction. When we do, we get negative 833.7 kilojoules per mole for the product, and negative 568.9 and negative 237.1 kilojoules per mole for the reactants. That gives us an overall delta G of negative 27.7 kilojoules per mole. That's a negative number, and that means the reaction is spontaneous at this temperature. Now let's do that calculation again, but this time we'll try it at a different temperature, 1000 degrees Celsius. Since it's not at standard temperature, we'll use this equation to determine the Gibbs free energy for the reaction. We need the values of delta H and delta S. In this case, we already have those, but if they weren't given to us, you could find them by using appendix C and these equations. Since we already have delta H and delta S, we'll just plug them into our formula. And next, we plug in our temperature. 1000 Celsius is 1273.15 Kelvin. That gives us a result of positive 5.12 kilojoules per mole. Notice what happened. At 25 degrees C, delta G was a negative number, so this was a spontaneous reaction. But at 1000 degrees C, the reaction isn't spontaneous. That makes sense. Remember, this is an exothermic reaction. As we saw back in video 18, when we have an exothermic reaction, we can write the heat as though it were a product of the reaction. But now think about what happens as we increase the temperature. Le Chatelier's principle tells us that as we add heat, we will shift the reaction to the left. That means it'll become less spontaneous, and that's exactly what happened when we increased the temperature from 25 degrees to 1000. This also tells us that there must be some temperature at which the reaction switches from being spontaneous to being non-spontaneous. How can we tell what that temperature is? Well, the reaction is spontaneous when delta G is negative, and not spontaneous when it's positive so the reaction makes the switch when delta G is zero. That gives us a way to find the temperature where this happens. All we need to do is set delta G equal to zero, plug in our values for delta H and delta S, and solve for the temperature. Let's try it. We'll move the 37.7 kilojoules per mole to the left side of the equation, and then divide by 0 0.03363 kilojoules per Kelvin mole. When we do that, we find out that T is 1,121 Kelvin, or 848 degrees C. So that's the temperature where the reaction flips from being spontaneous to non-spontaneous. Below that temperature, the reaction will happen by itself without the need to add energy to the system. Above that temperature, we'll have to add energy in order to get the reaction to happen. Well, that's all the new material for now. You may have noticed that when the Gibbs free energy is equal to zero, the reaction's at equilibrium. That tells us that there's a connection between equilibrium and the question of whether or not a reaction is spontaneous. We'll look more closely at that next time. I hope you'll join me for that. But in the meantime, have a good week. <laughs>